morning. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for the comments from last week uh, about us hitting two years of the Plot 37 vlog. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you very much. This morning, however, it's exciting times. We are potting up the first of... Ooh, sorry, I'm, when I did that, I just bent the thing out of shape. Whoopsie daisy. Um, so I'm only potting up half the tomatoes. Although I sowed them all on the same day at the same time, their kind of conditions were a little bit different. So this lot that I'm doing now were the first ones to go on the heat mat. Uh, I had to do kind of like shift work for the heat mats because I didn't have enough to kind of cover the whole lot. Yeah, so this lot was the first lot to go on and then they were the first ones to go under the lights. So they're just that much more advanced. So I'm going to pot these ones up first and then give the others like a week um, and then pot them up as well. So these are the chaps that are going to be potted up today. You can see they are a pretty good size and they're going to be going straight into the same size pots that I potted up the chilies into, which are... These chaps square, I like them square because it means that I can fit them on my trays a bit better and they don't tend to sort of fall over or get squashed. So I'm having a bit of a square pot session, particularly at this time of year when you're so short on space, like in the conservatory and particularly on the shelving where we've got the lights, just square pots. You just don't feel like you're wasting so much space, even if, I don't know, realistically, you're probably not fitting that much more in. It just feels like you are. <laughs> so I'm gonna put up these tomatoes. Uh, I'm going to put them up quite deeply because tomatoes will quite happily root up their stems with no problem whatsoever. And I've got a mixture of uh, peat-free compost and vermiculite. So I actually have quite a high percentage of vermiculite in there. Can you see that? It's quite a lot. It was about a third vermiculite to the compost mix. And um, the reason that I'm doing that is because vermiculite itself will hold water and it keeps it aerated. And because the compost that I'm using is peat free, one of the things that I have found with peat free compost, however good they are, because this Nelco one is brilliant. If you do let them dry out, which I've got to say, I am not the most consistent waterer. If you do let them dry out, it's really quite tricky to get them to absorb the moisture again. Like with peat, because it's so absorbent, you let it dry out, whoops, oh dear, you water it on and it does suck it up. So you do have to be just that tiny bit more careful with this. And I find if you put a really good amount of the vermiculite in there, that helps that so much because it doesn't, it doesn't compact and it doesn't dry out too much. And even if it does dry out, the vermiculite will suck up the water and it just allows the rest of it a bit more time to take up the water. Do you sort of see what I mean? Okay, so who do we have in the first batch? Who were the lucky ones that went into the heat mat first? <laughs> we have got Sundrop, Galena, Indigo Apple, Tigarella, Crushed Heart, Black Crim, Brad's Atomic Grape, Pink Plum, Black Icicle and Black Beauty. Round one. Show them.
beautiful. Uh, <laughs> but there we have it. That is the first round of tomatoes potted up. Job well done. Good morning, good morning. It is, uh, what day is it today? Saturday, might be Friday, can't remember. Near the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're having a big day at the allotment today but first of all it's quite early in the morning it's about seven o'clock and um, I'm just waiting for my friend Suki and we are going to the Indian shop because we're out of some things and it's one of those kind of shops that you don't do all that often and he's going so I'm gonna go with him so we just wait for him I might have a cup of tea I could probably sneak in a cup of tea <laughs> Welcome to Quality Food Townslow. <laughs> this is a strange old place. And also I do believe my filming is gonna be wibbly wobbly because I'm gonna be filming and carrying a basket. So we'll see how this goes. Also, it's almost impossible to buy anything in small quantities here. <laughs> you can have your body weight in garlic. Although this ginger looks nice. You can have a piece of that. Reindeer antler. So this is labeled as spinach, but it's not any spinach I know. Do you know what that is? Not sure. Ooh, turnips. I'm gonna get some turnips in this week, actually. Although, I might just have a couple of these. <laughs> get some little ones. Some of these are massive. Such a pretty color. These are cute. Turkish cabbage, they're like they've been sat on. Just <laughs> like little cushions. Look, this is the kind of thing, so you can buy four kilos of onions for £1.49. It's madness. Kohlrabi. We've got some very dodgy looking kohlrabi on the plot, actually. Very dodgy. It doesn't look anything like this. <laughs> Beautiful golden courgettes. Really, really looking forward to sowing the courgettes. That's going to be this month, actually. We'll get the courgettes in. Fresh hosey. See, this is more like spinach. That's what I would expect spinach to look like. I don't know what that other thing was. Coriander aplenty. And this one, I don't recognise this at all. It smells incredible. What's it called? Methy. I'm just like trailing after Suki around here. Have a couple of these beautiful Cypriot <laughs> potatoes with their red earth. That earth smells incredible. It's such a distinctive smell. Okay. So this is like the fresh food bit. Oh look, they've got that jackfruit. I can't stand jackfruit. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Turmeric. Right, so this is the fresh fruit bit. Oh, look at that celery. Got to get some celery in as well, actually. That's about now, isn't it? Parsley, not short of parsley. Got loads of onions and uh, curry leaves. I'm definitely going to take some curry leaves with me. I love the smell of these. I could just like waft this in my face all day. <laughs> right, as I was saying, so that's the fresh fruit bit and then it just like turns into this huge warehouse of large quantities of stuff. I mean, do you need two kilos of red lentils at a time? Probably not. But yeah, there's everything. And what's lovely about coming to a place like this is just that so much of it, I just don't even know what you would use it for. Like these, you've got your standard ones, you know, coriander, dill, basil, all of that sort of thing. And then you come across something that you've just got no idea about. Like, 
let me just go down on here. So what's this? We have got like Indian pumpkin seeds. I know what they are, but what would you use them for in cooking? Cucumber seeds, rattan jot, don't know what that is. Licorice root powder, I know that one. Harrod skin. Yeah, there's just so many things that I know nothing about, which is pretty marvelous, really. Look at these ones. This one, Shilla Pushpi, is lichen, dried lichen. Right, something I am going to pick up in here is some rose petals. You got your noodles. And then, last but not least, one of the main reasons of being here, Suki's already stocked up on his, is noodles to stock up the shed with emergency lunches. That's me done. Sorry about the wobbly filming. Um, I'm filming with the hand I'm holding my basket with and my basket has now got four kilos of onions and everything else in it and it's pretty heavy. <laughs> Little bowls. Oh, cute. Yeah, so has got some hooks in his boot that he's determined to get his bags attached to. <laughs> Not sure why, but it's the thing to be done, apparently. Right. Beautiful. Sookie. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed a little excursion to quality foods. Instagram messaging things are way to contact. Yeah. Right. I've worked it out. Now. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Allotment time. Oh, the boot was open. What? Big bag of vermiculite. Oh bollocks. God, it's a gorgeous day though. So we had a couple of things we needed to bring up here today, which was um, vermiculite and obviously the noodles that I've just bought to restock the shed. And what are the two things that I haven't brought with me today? I haven't brought any noodles and I haven't brought any vermiculite. Fantastic.
the water's on, that means, that means it's officially spring. <laughs> And what with the water being on, it means it's time to unravel the hose that we put away for the winter. So we do have mains water on the site, but it is turned off over winter because of frosts and such like. But everybody leaves their hose out, so we don't have to roll up our hose every time we use it. We just leave it out. And ours tends to lay straight down our centre path. So I'm going to mow and strim before we unravel it. And then we're basically set for summer. I'm cable tying the hose to the, our front fence so it's just lifted up which means that I can carry on strimming across here and keep the path tidy for the year and it's got enough uh, slack on the end that it will reach the actual tap. We've got the excess going down our main path and uh, I think I might go and plug it in and have the first hosing of the year although it suddenly got very dark and that is a very big looming cloud above us. So mama is still on the potato train. <laughs> These are the last two sajita that are going in today. That's going to be in bags. Okay. I'll go in my bag. <laughs> Potatoes, girlies. Do you want me to take that one over? Yeah, I won't be able to Label ready? I haven't, no. Okay, we'll get a label. Casablanca, 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 Sajita, Sajita, Sajita. Sajita, right. Right. Hey. Perfect. I'm thinking we might just give us just an idea. Because the pink the, the red Duke of Yorkshire earlies. Yeah. I thought we could find a bed that we're not going to be putting anything in until quite late. Yeah, I think that's a good and idea. Just put them in. I think we should do that. Yep. Even if we end up having to dig them up early, it's better than them going to waste. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go and put the compost on that top bed. Right, okay. Gee, that cuts beautifully, doesn't it? Certainly does, Mum. Certainly does. 
So this is the bed that we cleared a couple of weeks back and I'm just going to give it a mulch of the rotted horse manure and then we're going to be sowing eventually, not yet, but we're going to sow some parsnips in here. We'll have beetroot and also those pink panther onions, the sets that I bought when I was away with Johanna. I haven't actually managed to get them in the ground yet, but this is the bed they're going to go into. So yeah, getting things ready. Things are really moving on. Nothing quite like a freshly mulched bed, is there? <laughs> Obviously, the robins love it when you start mulching as well. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What you want? Before I dismantle that frame, I'm just having a nose in the pond and it is pretty brutal. Look at that. That's a bee has been got, being devoured. What else is going on? There's loads of newts in here. Mum, we've got tadpoles. Loads of them. But we never had any frog spawn. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> Not both going to fit in this shot. Yeah. We've got tadpoles. I'm guessing they must be newt tadpoles because we didn't see any frog spawn and there wasn't any toad spawn in the pond that I could see. And newts lay their eggs individually so you don't see it in the same way. It's all under the leaves and stuff. So yeah, I hope and I think these are baby newts. One more little update for you. Somebody has been eating the peas. So we've had to cover them in netting. We're just using the bird netting. I think it's pigeons. It's not the flea beetle, you know, the one that just um, makes scallop edging on the leaves. Somebody's just come along and eaten it. So I'm hoping this is gonna keep them off. We've had to cover the other two as well. So annoying. Bit of excitement we're just looking at where we're going to put the compost next because we're moving the um, covers around obviously and uh, we're just about to weed the new asparagus bed and I've just spotted some asparagus what have we discovered? Asparagus. yes oh wait look at this gorgeous chap so like I said this is the new asparagus bed it's been in this will be its fourth year so Theoretically, we could eat it this year, maybe, probably next year. But because we've still got the other bed going, um, we don't have any need to. And the longer you can leave it without, um, you know, disturbing it and picking it, the better. So we're hoping to bring these ones on really, really strong before we start picking them. But if these ones are up, I wonder if there's any in the main bed. Let's go and have a look. could be wrong i am wrong i told mum in all faith that there wasn't any up yet but look at this chap oh it's not gonna be long it's not gonna be long and every meal is gonna have asparagus in it <laughs> for six weeks solid have you i'm coming what's happened i'll come and pick up that side i just have to it's got no points on either end, this one. Okay, I've got it. Okay. Just because I can't get into these. Just here. There's more coming up there, isn't there? Hey, look at them here. Yeah, loads.
Okay, so we're sort of making our way up this way, you see, you know, like um, doing the beds and then strimming around so you can sort of see the progress. <laughs> but the next bed, something incredibly exciting is going on. So let me show you, let me show you because it's outstanding. Perennial brassica bed that's got some purple sprouting broccoli in it temporarily. But on Instagram last week, I put this, look at that. That is the beginnings of a nine star broccoli cauliflower thing. But what I hadn't realised is on the other plant, look at the size of these, look at that one. It's massive. That's the size of a cricket ball. It is unbelievable. And I was so excited about that little tiny pinhead one on the other one. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. I am so excited. <laughs> Nine star broccoli slash cauliflower are us. Exciting times. We got mushrooms. Yeah, so I've got two different types of mushrooms that I'm going to try growing. I've got um, a white oyster mushroom, like quite standard, and then there's a lion's mane. Ooh. Ooh. I'm pretty excited. I have grown mushrooms before. I grew uh, grey oyster mushrooms in France really successfully. They were brilliant, um, but that was quite a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, last year, was it last year? No, it was it would have been 2020. Or maybe it was 2021. No idea. Last two years have kind of become one. Um, but sometime spring, um, I was at the farmer's market in Chiswick and there was a local guy selling like, you know, the bagged up mycelia. So you just sort of soak them and then they grow your mushrooms. And that was a grey oyster again. Um, my only problem with it was that I wasn't entirely convinced. <laughs> um, I only got one really small flush from the bag, like one blooming of the mushrooms and it was really expensive so I wasn't wildly impressed by it shall I say but that was a sort of an unknown company and there is a company called Marvellous Mushrooms which I think great name anyway <laughs> um, but I've got some from them and I've got two boxes and I'm going to set them up in the sitting room I was going to set them up upstairs but we've been hunting for a leak uh, that's happening underneath the shower <laughs> and so I've had to rip like part of my office to pieces and I don't have anywhere to put the mushrooms now. <laughs> so I'm gonna set them up on top of where I've got my grow lights and my cucumbers. So I'm gonna have a read of the instructions because one of the things I'd say about the last ones I got, like no instructions. You had to kind of look it up online, but these ones seem to have like a big sheet of all the things you need to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. Clear some space on the stand, set up my mushrooms, and then we'll have to have mushroom update every vlog. <laughs> Right, wish me luck. worked out if I'm supposed to take those growths off yet but I will find out soon while we're over here chilies all looking good they're the tomatoes that we potted up the other day and these are the chaps that are slightly behind you can see they're actually quite a long way behind cucumbers looking gorgeous look at this beauties and uh, yeah a couple of extra bits aubergines and stuff on here okay that is the oyster mushrooms now I'm going to have a go with the lion's mane. The lion's mane is, um, well, understandably slightly more tricky. It's a bit more unusual. And the instructions seemed a lot longer. Actually, I was overplaying that. <laughs> it's not that tricky. Just got to scrape off the mycelia that's on here, scrape it off the top, and then fold down this top, pushing out the air, and sellotape it across the bottom. Cut holes where the crosses are. Another humidity tent. And we're away. Yeah, I don't know what I was talking about. It wasn't that complicated, was it? <laughs> Ooh. 
Teresa, you're very attractive. <laughs> you have them instead of a flower and a brand <laughs> Poor, long-suffering mum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first job of the day, out the way. And uh, let me just show you. It is... Sunny. <laughs> so I'm actually going to not forget to take the noodles up today. Big selection. It's just always handy to have them up there. You know, you never know. You never know when you're going to be stranded, lunchless. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got to do that. I'm going to take the strimmer again, although I did a lot of strimming yesterday. Uh, and I think it's probably time to head off. Do we have any eggs today after a no show yesterday? <laughs> Boy, does it need a tidy in here. about what is she shouting about that rube hmm? going? Go? beauty chicken hey come on let's put you down i know i know she's shouting there's nothing down there i promise ruby's pretending that she's got treats because she thinks that <laughs> she thinks that uh, Mills is getting treats up here with me, so Ruby's pretending she's found something to distract her. Uh, chicken life, terribly complicated, terribly complicated. You see, nobody had anything, did they? <laughs> that was a shock, Rube. That was a shock. Hey girls, what are you doing? Come in a bit closer. Right, let's get into action. We're in the very first bed when you come into the allotment this morning. This is the bed where I twice tried to sew a mixed green manure. Well, what I'm cutting down now is the absolute, that's like the whole extent of what came up from those like two whole packets of seed I put down. <laughs> yeah, huge raging success. Oh no, there's one more. Oh yeah, so many I missed one. Anyway, what we're planning to do with this bed, I'm gonna keep those two uh, chicory, which are just in the middle there, and we're gonna use this bed to plant the excess Red Duke of York potatoes. So Sutton's very kindly uh, gave me a whole kilo of Red Duke of York potatoes for being included in their website block earlier in the year. But a kilo of potatoes is a lot for us. We normally only get like six of each variety and we've given some away, but we've still got excess. So we're just gonna plonk them in here. And we've decided that even if we end up uh, harvesting them early and they're just little tiny small ones because we need the bed for something else it doesn't really matter you know nice small potatoes that'll do just fine it's better than them going to waste so I'm going to lay these out in here and uh, normally I would trough potatoes but we're not really troughing things anymore hence growing them in bags so this is going to be just kind of dig a hole plonk them in you see we've got so many of these left over we've we've already sown them in the greenhouse we've got them in pots in the greenhouse yeah we've just got masses of them a kilo of potatoes is surprisingly a lot having said that sometimes when you buy them by the kilo you end up with like five or six massive ones because you don't know how many which is why we like to buy them loose because you can choose the size you know for a kilo you could get sort of 25 30 potatoes if they're all small ones it being done by weight 
But if they're all massive, you get much fewer. So it's much more difficult to judge how many you're actually going to get when you're buying it by weight. But yeah, it seems we got an awful lot of small ones in our kilo. So yeah, thank you to Sutton's. Um, I'm not whinging about having too many potatoes, I promise. It's really lovely of them to have given them to us. And Red Duke of York, which is my absolute favourite. So, uh, the original kohlrabi, so we put in some kohlrabi really early last year um, and then we never successional sowed because I got overexcited in the first lot. We had so many of them that we didn't have any space to put any others, but actually what ended up happening is that we got a really good early crop from them. And then the ones which didn't form, we just left in feeling hopeful because we hadn't planted any more as kind of a succession. And we just left them in and it was obvious they weren't going to do anything. And now we finally reached acceptance. It's just not going to happen now. They're in like full flower and it's a year ago. <laughs> so we're going to rip them out. That is these chaps looking very sad. Look at that. That is not a prime specimen of kohlrabi. Pretty flower though. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's not happening. It's not happening. So all of these are going to come out. Some of them are looking quite round and sort of they vaguely look like a kohlrabi should, but they're going to be so tough because they've got the flower stems and they've basically been in there for a whole year. It's not really worth it. Like that one. Like that looks sort of like it might be okay, but I reckon you'd break your teeth on it. So all of them is just not, not good. Not good. So the rest of these... I'm going to go get a hat. So we've got this Cavalanero, uh, which has obviously past its best now <laughs> it's gone to seed uh, we have been eating the shoots as they're coming but obviously these ones have completely got away from us so what we're going to do is just strip off all like the last little bits of the tender leaves that are on here and then leave this completely uncovered and just let it flower for the bees and whoever else fancies a bit of flowers so we're going to just strip everything in this bed there are also some calettes which have done exactly the same thing and we're going to do the same thing to them and then we'll mulch it. We are on a mulching roll at the moment. Also got the ones at the end to do on this side. And then, yeah, we are ahead of the game on the mulching front. back up and running we're giving it a really good soak in here because it's been so hot and look it's such a shame all that beautiful pak choy has bolted i mean it's all still perfectly edible and at this stage those stems will be so tender you just eat the whole thing anyway but still it's a bit of a shame everything else in here is looking quite good though look at that beautiful chard chard of glory and the mustard's looking great i mean it's looking a bit battered because i've just like jet washed it with the hose but <laughs> Everything's looking really quite nice in here. Shame about the pak choy, although I think we're going to have some of that for lunch. So that'd be good. But yeah, it has been really, really hot and such a fluctuation in temperatures. Like it was 42.9 when I opened the door and it was minus one last night. Like I said, I'm going to pick some of these for lunch today. But at this stage, when they've only just bolted and they've bolted so quickly, their whole stem from like nose to tail is completely tender and beautiful. So you can just eat the whole lot. And I mean, it still does resemble a pak choy. You can see it was once a pak choy. It's just, you know, a very tall one. <laughs> but they'll taste amazing. And actually, funnily enough, I really love them when their stems go like this. They have like a much, much stronger flavour. It's like, it's almost meaty. They're just beautiful, beautiful. 
So yeah, now the race is on to eat these before they go hard because if we leave it too long, they will go hard and then we won't be able to eat them. Well, that's us for the day, I think. Got quite a lot done. I'm not dissatisfied. <laughs> and we ate the pak choy with the noodles. It's good. I've picked a load of that pak choy actually, a bit more than I did earlier. We're gonna give some away because uh, it's all, once it's bolted, like at the moment, it's really tender all the way down that stem. And like you can eat the whole lot, it'd be wonderful. But give it a week or so and that will start really toughening up and then it's not very nice to eat so then you can only just kind of take the leaves off it's not the same so pick to load and we'll give it away take it to the pub with me tonight in fact i think is probably the answer <laughs> all right we're gonna pack up and head off Good morning chaps, it is uh, Monday morning, the vlog is coming out for patrons this afternoon if all goes well and I don't have another technical nightmare <laughs> and I'm in my little editing corner of the office, it's warmer here next to the radiator, although it's been fantastically sunny, it's blooming cold at night, it's still so chilly. Yeah I'm filming in this corner today uh, because I mentioned earlier that we've been trying to find a leak that's been coming from the shower. Anyway, I've punched a hole in the uh, ceiling of the kitchen. Not punched, like not outrage. I mean, I've cut a hole in the ceiling so we can see the bottom of the shower. And the shower unit's actually behind this wall. So I've had to rip the plasterboard off the back, which means moving all the books, you know, where I normally do the recording. I've got loads of stuff everywhere. All that is just in a huge pile. It's chaos. So yeah, it's been quite an eventful week. So many exciting things. Mushrooms really exciting the nine star broccoli unbelievably exciting <laughs> i couldn't believe that i was so excited when i saw that little tiny like pinhead one on the on the other plant and i was just oh my god I calling mum over you know <laughs> and then when i saw the other plant is just absolutely smothered in them and they're huge well for me they're huge like they're as big as any cauliflower I've ever got to grow that's like a normal cauliflower I'm useless at growing cauliflowers so yeah it's, pr it's pretty blindingly exciting <laughs> and the plot's looking fantastic it just everywhere's looking fantastic all of the plots on the site just because it's so lush and green and everything's coming out and uh, it's just the most fantastic time of year. And anyway, we are on to our third year of Plot 37. Thank you so much for all the comments and everything that I got from last week's, the two year episode. I really enjoyed making it. I really enjoyed kind of going back over the uh, old footage, even if I did have the technical hiccup. <laughs> I still enjoyed making it and it's made me feel much more sort of connected to the timings of things and I've and I've devised a new scheme I've broken um, the year up into weeks and I'm noting down because I have a diary that I like note down when I've done something specific but I've got a board on the wall in fact I'll, I'll just turn it around and show you but I've got this board up here where I'm going to be noting down the major things that happen each week for the whole year and then hopefully by the end of it, I'll be able to draw up a plan for the following year and then I'll be able to share it with you. But obviously those kind of things are quite difficult to do because um, every year is different and you have to respond to the to what's happening in the year. Like if we're going to have a cold snap, you have to kind of shuffle things around as a judgment rather than just having this kind of like straight dictatorial do this this week, this this week, this this week. But yeah, some kind of guide would be good, wouldn't it? Oh, so like I say, it's morning, cup of tea, not a drink, unfortunately, but we are off. It definitely feels like spring. So nice to have the hose back on. I know that sounds silly, but I really miss it because obviously we, we have the uh, water barrels that we use over the winter. So it's not a problem for watering, but it is different just being able to turn on the hose. I know that quite a lot of sites, uh, you're not allowed to use hoses, even if there is mains water. So we're really lucky in that sense really lucky i'm gonna round this up quite quickly chaps because it's a really long video i've only done like the first edit and it's like an hour and a half long <laughs> so i need to chop it way back and uh put this on the end of it so monday cheers for the monday clubbers and uh massive tea based cheers to the rest of you on tuesday or wednesday or whenever you're watching it 
it's spring. It's properly spring. Everything's happening. It's go.